cross that he was given when he was ordained a Jesuit priest. And on the right hand, he had a rosary that he received at the Grotto of Lourdes. And as he was dying, he forgave his captors, proclaimed his innocence. He said, my only guilt is that I'm a Catholic priest. And he said, Viva Cristo Rey. Can you repeat that with us? Viva, Viva Cristo, Cristo Rey. Rey. Again. Viva, Viva Cristo Rey. Rey. And they time. shot him. And as they shot him, and this was a firing squad of 20 or 30 mm. uh, marksmen, he would not fall down. He stood there. And the photographers started shooting the pictures. And in the newspapers the next day, it was all over the, the priests that would not die. And instead of sh giving an example of how you do not mess with the Mexican government, you mess with us. This they created a martyr. Miguel, blessed Miguel Pro, is a famous Mexican martyr of the Jesuit order. He would not go down. Finally, he did collapse, and, uh, and he died. Now, there was a reason you wanted to mention him at the beginning of this yes. talk. What was his offense? He was a Catholic priest who would not pay, not obey the government, the new Mason government. Mexico at one time, make no mistake of it, was one of the most powerful, wealthiest nations in the world, and that was when they had Blessed Mother on their flag. Well, Lady of Guadalupe, uh, Lady of Guadalupe. she was on the Mexican flag until the Masons took over in the late 19th century, early 20th century. They took Our Lady off the flag, and we know the story about Mexico. What was his crime, and what was the crime of hundreds of priests who left Mexico because they would not swear allegiance to the head of the government, say, saying they only swore allegiance to the pope? What was the crime of the bishops? And why did Miguel Pro and others who have been beatified and made saints now, why did they come back? Because people were not, didn't, were not having the sacraments. Okay. Well, no, we're getting, really All right, good. but. We have, a, we have a focus in this talk. Uh, the, the Holy Spirit gave me that. I understand, and it's very good what he gave you. I understand that, and it's important what he gave you. The only thing is we did want, we really want to talk about the victories of the rosary. This is what we're going to share with you is that, the. That's, that's part of it. Okay, then as long as you can get back to it, keep going. He died holding the rosary. And he died. That's good. He died because the government would not allow freedom of religion. Is the Lord talking to you today? Very good. You are so good. <laughs> He's good looking. How many times have we said, <laughs> how many times have we said all we can do now is pray? When all else is exhausted, when we've exerted every possibility and nothing works, and it looks hopeless, we say, well, now there's nothing left to do but pray, right? Yeah. Wrong. That's exactly the wrong way to do it. First, we pray. Then we exert every other possibility. Father Jay, remember, everybody remembers Father Jay. He told us you pray a memorari in petition, and at the very same time, you pray a memorari in thanksgiving. And it you works. You claim it. You claim the healing. You claim the miracle. You claim what it is you're asking for. You light a candle in petition, and at the same time, light a candle in thanksgiving, claiming whatever it is you're asking for. St. Paul said, Put on the armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our wrestling is not against flesh and blood, but against the principalities and the powers, against the world rulers of the present darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness on high. Now, 
We're in the best of times and we're in the worst of times. Our battle is not with humans, as St. Paul tells us, it is with powers and principalities. It's with the powers of evil. The big battle is for the souls of men. And how do we fight the battle? Through the prayers, the gifts that our Lord Jesus has given us through his mother Mary, the rosary. What do we, what do we, you know, we talked about it yesterday when, when we had this accident with the Mercedes Benz in Poland on the way to Czestochowa and we all thought we were dying and everybody was calling on, on mama. What better armor can you wear than that of the Virgin Mary? You know, the breastplate of Our Lady of Czestochowa. Um, we have we, to bring it in tomorrow. We had gotten a few of them when we were there and we brought one to Mother Angelica. And for the longest time, until she became ill, she wore that breastplate of Our Lady of Czestochowa, the armor of Our Lady. We need our mama. Who did you run to as a child? Who do you always call on mama? Uh, when Penny was a child and she'd have a nightmare, who did she run to? Her mother. Who did I run to? My mother. Each time. Till today. That's the first thing out of my mouth. And what would happen when she, what would she it's say mama. to you? What would she say to you when you had a nightmare? I'd run into the bedroom and, and uh, I'd always go on my mother's side, although it was on the other side. And she'd say, uh, Pauline, my name. Did you pray before you went to sleep? Well, you go back and pray, and you'll never have another nightmare. Pray, and that's simple. Went back, prayed, and no nightmares. Put on the armor of God. Who was chosen by God to bring into the world his son, to care for him, to parent him, to teach him? His mother, Mother Mary. She was the best one to do it. Did Jesus not perform his first miracle because of his mother? I can just imagine, Mom, you know, it's not time yet. And she said, just do whatever he tells you. Um, St. John wrote the gospel of the wedding feast of Cana, and, and he also has a parallel with Jesus on the cross. And in both instances, it's the only time that he calls Mary woman. Woman, this is your son. Son, this is your mother. Woman, what has this got to do with you or me? My hour has not yet come. It's as if he was saying to her, Mother, you realize, of course, that if I start now, it's I'm one step closer to Calvary. The sooner I begin my ministry, the sooner it ends. Do you really want me to do this? And she said, do whatever he tells you. Jesus called her woman because she stood before him, not solely as his mother, but re representing all women. She was strong. You know, uh, the statues of Mary are beautiful. But Mary was a strong woman. She, if you ever go to the Holy Land, you'll see over the hills and the mountains, and at that time there were no roads, that Mary went to go and visit her cousin Elizabeth. She stood at the foot of the cross, and I will not challenge anybody to take her place and stand at the foot of the cross. And she did not cry out. When we went to Oberammergau, it was all in German, but they had it in English translation, but they didn't need it. We knew the story. We knew the story, but they did have a little twist on it that Penny noticed. When it was time for Jesus and Mary to meet. On the way to the cross. Now, Oberammergau is the passion play, and they put it on every 10 years. They looked at each other, and that's all we learned. But in the play, they say, they started to pull Jesus away, and she screamed, do it to me, leave him alone. But Mary didn't, because she didn't want to weaken the human Jesus. You can't weaken God, the human Jesus, and cause him additional pain. And as mother of those that were right there, 
those who had rejected him, she couldn't weaken them by crying out. So Mary Magdalene collapsed. Mother Mary stood. Now, the greats of our church have turned to our Lord through his mother Mary. To the saints have turned to our Lord through his mother Mary. Our popes all prayed the rosary. I, I think we told you last night about having, bro, is it getting warm? Is it getting warm in here? Or is it just us? Okay. It's warm. It is getting warmer. Put on the air. Let's get a little more air conditioning on it because we've got to keep these people awake for at least another 45 minutes. <laughs> And that, it's not easy. It's that we not went, easy. we went, to, we had a, 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 an interview with the Archbishop of Zaragoza in Spain, mm -hmm. and uh, he, he invited us to his private chapel, and there in his private chapel was a Bible, a rosary, and a notepad. And the same with the Primate of Poland. We went uh, into his private chapel in Warsaw, and there was a Bible, a notebook, and a rosary. They always prayed the rosary. Our Pope John Paul II had a tremendous love for and faith in the power of the rosary. The, uh, if you remember, he believed that in his private chapel, he, uh, he prays before the Blessed Sacrament and he turned to Our Lady uh, in that audience when he was shot in May 13, 1981, he was going around in the Pope Mobile, like Ted Miller was saying, and, and he would touch the people. He'd go along and he'd, he'd touch you and you could touch him. And uh, somebody had a statue of Our Lady of Fatima. And he went down to kiss the statue of Our Lady of Fatima, and that's when the gunman shot him. And if he had not been down to kiss the statue, he would have got it right in the heart. And so she saved him. He insisted that she saved him from dying. And the following year, he went back in Thanksgiving to Fatima to thank her. And he brought the bullet which they, that's in the crown till today. You can't see it, but when you look at the crown of Our Lady in the chapel of the apparitions in Fatima, in that crown is the bullet that they took from Pope John Paul II. We're talking about Mary, the saints, and the angels. One day, uh, we were still in the world and um, in business, and it just was a hard day on the phone. I, I mean, everyone who could, could cause a problem was on the phone. It was that kind of a day. And uh, I had to leave and pick up our grandson from high school because his grandfather would not allow him to drive until he was 17. And so I went to, he was right. I went to pick him up, but as I'm going to pick him up, I thought, wait a minute, I have a lot of anger in my heart, and I don't want to pass that on to my grandson, so I'll pray the rosary. So on the way to school, I prayed the rosary. We got there, I picked him up, and... Uh, so now she's kind of calming down, mellowing out all the things, the bad things that have been going on. Are and now that's her my mind. gorgeous grandson. And so I go out onto the, the freeway, and they won't even let me. It's just a, a parking lot. They won't even let me into the first lane. It's just the, the lane, you know, you have, then you have, what? Now we, have, we have been California drivers for years, and we and know York if we want to get that. in that left lane, we're going to get in the left lane. But on this particular day, it was completely blocked. There was no way for her to get in the left lane. Finally, they let me into that first lane. Now, I mean, again, it's bumper to bumper, and I have no patience with it. So I'm trying. Besides, I was always a fast driver. I'm, I try to get into the faster lane. And it's just a wall of cars. None on the other side, just this here. And they won't let me in. Oh, I am now really, really angry. But she's praying the rosary. <laughs> but I won't. Hail Mary, Hail Mary, Hail Mary, Hail Mary. <laughs> and I'm trying not to let my innocent grandson know how upset his grandmother is. 
all of a sudden, I heard a pump. The car started to go over this way. And I yelled out, not him, Lord, not him. And till today, they could not tell us how we didn't go over the cliff. Right See, she was in the right lane, which was the, the lane by the, you know, it was a cliff, sort of. And what happened was, it's the strangest thing, is the axle broke in the right tire, but it locked the tire in a right like this, so the tire just sat there like that. Wedged. Didn't go out, she didn't go over, she just wedged there, and it stopped. But she was as close to the right side as possible. And when I spoke to the policeman, a highway patrolman came, shook his head and said there was no earthly reason why they were not dead. Uh, the driver used some expletives, which we will not repeat, no. and shook his head as he helped us into the cab, helped them into the cab. The car was helplessly raised in the air behind us. And there was, was the cliff. It was unbelievable. The mechanic told us later that if they had not been if he, they were not standing in front of him, he would not have believed that they had survived that. Hail Mary, Hail Mary, Hail Mary, Hail Mary. Pray in the rosary. The power of the rosary. Was it an angel that had wedged the wheel beneath the car? Was it Our Lady just telling us, don't worry, I'm here with you? It's the same thing that happened to us in Chesterhova, on the way to Chesterhova. Or could it be that God heard uh, Penny's cry and called upon the guardian angels to save us, them, I wasn't in the car, or the grandson, or was it the queen of the angels who That's sent another them? another thing. When it, you call upon the angels, I always call on Mother Mary, queen of the angels, summon your angels with uh, Michael. In front. Not only that, we, yeah, we, we didn't tell you this, but you know that Annabelle, St. Annabelle Joyce that he talked about in the last talk that Ted Miller talked about? Well, she was the head of the Legion of Mary. And we had a junior Legion of Mary that we were the head of. And my grandson, who was in the car with my wife, was the treasurer of the Legion of Mary. So she's not about to let anything happen to my grandson. But to show you a convert, I can't I get back to that again. The power of a Kava convert, she never let loose a bomb. I mean, uh, the reason we went on the first pilgrimage was because she just bugged him and bugged him and bugged him until we took a pilgrimage to the Blessed Mother. And then we had to go to all Our Lady shrines, Our Lady Guadalupe, which I didn't want to go to, and it wound up to the most beautiful shrine I ever visited. But she was the one that talked us into the Junior Legion of Mary, and she was probably praying for our grandson, who she loved as well. The, the rosary. She's the power, here right now. The power of the rosary.